Thank you very much. Please let's take our seats. Asante Nisana. Um, ministers present, uh, the Chairman of Council, Vice Chancellor, the President of the Student Council, and your good deputy, distinguished ladies, the Governor of Nairobi, uh, students, good morning. Good morning. I'm Jambo. Comrades, power. power. <laughs> I am pleased, indeed very, very pleased, to join the Technical University of Kenya community and bear witness as they take yet another big stride into the future. More than any other institution, the history of the Technical University of Kenya is also the story of our country's aspiration to pursue industrialization through globally competitive, technology-driven, and knowledge-based productivity. From the start, this institution has maintained its leadership position as Kenya's premier technical and vocational education training organization. The mainstay of this well-deserved profile has and naturally been quality for which it has remained attractive to large numbers of Kenyans pursuing training in vital fields. Due to this commitment to quality, the institution is still highly regarded by industries seeking to employ sound and reliable technical personnel. In response to the critical technical needs of a nation striving for newly industrialized, high middle income status, as set out in Kenya Vision 2030, this institution was functionally elevated from a national polytechnic to a polytechnical university. The rationale of this strategy was to enhance the institution's traditional strengths in the domain of technical and vocational education and training by investing it with a strong research, development, and innovation capacity underpinned by a robust academic infrastructure. The nation's demand for this and other similar institutions is clear. Our socioeconomic transformation agenda stands in a need on responsive education in the technical and vocational fields. Growth will require well-developed talent, skills, and knowledge finely attuned to our present needs and future aspirations. Our young people deserve opportunities to pursue further education and training after obtaining their diplomas and should be able to progress to bachelor's degree and beyond. It was therefore imperative for the government to provide a flexible mechanism with multi-entry and multi-exit learning opportunities. I commend the Technical University Fraternity for striving in the face of daunting challenges to retain the iconic identity of this institution. You have struggled with admirable resolve to remain essentially a technical and vocational university properly supported with robust science and technology programs and complemented by the social sciences and humanities as well. And it was very refreshing to see the presentations by the students here, as was commended by our governor. I also commend. <laughs> I also commend the university for remaining mindful of its commitment to the Tibet sector by continuing to provide opportunities for their diploma graduates to pursue university degrees. In particular, I take this opportunity to express deep appreciation of the system you are implementing of giving due credit to prior learning as well as your multi-entry and multi-exit 
uh, framework. These visionary transformations and bold innovations demonstrate that the university is not only committed, but also has tremendous potential to lead the way in supporting the rapid actualization of our plan to transform Kenya's economy across all sectors from the bottom up. The number of young people and young Kenyans who have responded positively to your institutional vision is ample testimony that you are doing something right and that you are doing it well. Our presence, our presence at this event signals the government's readiness to partner with tertiary institutions and especially Tibets to forge a clear pathway for Kenya to deepen its competitive technical capacity increase the number of highly skilled technical personnel and assume global leadership in the transformational innovations and build an efficient engine to power growth in every sector of our economy. We are committed, good people, to do our part in supporting the growth of Kenya as a, techni as a technological and industrial powerhouse and the starting point for such an endeavor is right here. I direct the, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Education to expeditiously work out modalities of government support for graduates of our Tibet institutions wishing to pursue further education. It is important that the institution maintains its core identity as a polytechnical university. This means that its mandate to train at the diploma level must be sustained. I am aware. I am aware that funding for this component has not been up to the appropriate levels. I have already asked the Cabinet Secretary to make appropriate arrangements to ensure that this university lives up to its founding mandate by providing funding for it to continue offering diploma programs. I have of course been informed by your Vice-Chancellor that you intend to create an independent Tibet institution somewhere in South Sea and I want to inform you that the government of Kenya will support that endeavor and provide the necessary funds and provide the necessary funds for that development. I understand also that the university has put in motion arrangements to establish, as I have said, a dedicated Tibet college. The government will support this important development and facilitate the Tibet College to become a center of excellence that trains Tibet instructors to serve in institutions throughout Kenya. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, as we will do our part, I want you to commit that you will indeed train instructors and uh, lecturers for the other Tibet institutions in Kenya. And the Ministry of Education should make necessary budgetary arrangements and provide the necessary resources for the construction of the Tibet College to, Im to commence immediately. <laughs> Kenyans deserve to be proud of the fact that the Technical University of Kenya is a model that has been successfully replicated in many African countries. These jurisdictions have proceeded to establish more technical universities than us, considering the persistent shortage of critical skills in vocational disciplines like plumbing, welding, woodwork, and others. The government is committed to supporting the training of Kenyan youth to be self-employing and capable of contributing to growth of our nation. Evidently, Kenya needs more technical universities to meet this enormous challenge. <laughs> On this Innovation Week, I encourage the university to intensify its effort in developing innovation. 
we will support it to incubate transformative innovations with potential to become leading enterprises and competitive industrial developments. And I agree with the president of the student union here that it is time to provide an innovation hub at the Technical <laughs> University of Kenya. And you can count on my support, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in particular, I encourage the university to establish a technology, a technology park where all the discoveries and innovations made by staff and students can further be developed and showcased. And we will find, we will find the nexus between the development of the science park and the innovation hub so that we can roll it into one and provide that facility in this uh, great university. And I look forward to coming to see how that will work. <clears throat> I also encourage the collaboration with the State Department of Housing and Urban Development, which harness the university's mechanical engineering capacity to fabricate mobile stalls and tricycles for traders at the city bank. Such productive collaborations should be deepened and extended to a framework of preference for universities in public sector contracts in their fields of specialization. I am looking forward, for example, as we develop the railway city right in your neighborhood, that more skills and competencies will be leveraged from Technical University of Kenya to support the construction and the development of the railway city. The appropriate policy framework is being developed and the impressive capabilities showcased here, and I saw quite some interesting developments in your uh, workshops here. That will help to build the case for such framework and increase impetus towards its establishment. I note with appropriate support the university can produce factory and machinery parts, including motor vehicle parts for the local market and export. And I look forward to building the bridge between your workshops, your laboratories, with the um, eventual industry users so that we can create the nexus and create the ecosystem for us to be able to use and leverage on the knowledge and skills in building and supporting our industry. Um, we must seize this priceless opportunity to place our industrialization agenda in our hands and enhance local capacity to compete globally in sophisticated industrial projects. I commend the university for taking effective measures to resolve various challenges standing in the way of its ability to fulfill its mandate. The capacity and space constraints occasioned by sudden expansion without commensurate funding has been a major problem. I am also aware that there is a misalignment between the ministry's charter and the constitutive legislative instrument which affects the clarity of its mandate. And I want to say here, after consultations with the council chair and the vice chancellor, that we will rework and we will recharter this university so that we can establish this university as a special technical university, not just a university. I know. The charter that was given to this university is a charter like for any other university. But that should, that should not be the case. The Technical University of Kenya should not just be Technical University in name, it should be Technical University by charter. And as always, 
funding for public universities remains inadequate with multiple implications for their performance and capacity to contribute optimally to the national agenda. Again, I want to commit that my administration is going to ensure that we, have a, we create a framework that makes it possible for every university to admit students that the government of Kenya can support. And I am happy. I am happy that we have received recommendations from different stakeholders, from vice chancellors, from the Association of Students, and the recommendations that have been made are practical and they are workable. And therefore, when we finally come through with the recommendations from the President's uh, Presidential Working Party on education, we will capture all the aspects so that the 50 percent resources that are available to the university at the moment, which is making it very difficult for our institutions of higher learning to um, carry out their courses and train our young people appropriately, we can close the gaps and ensure that we provide for alternative sources of funding so that there should be adequate funding for all the courses that are provided for by our universities. I want to give assurance that the government of Kenya is seized with these and other critical concerns and that we are committed to resolving them, as I have said, in the spirit of collaboration and through the Presidential Working Party, because we need a sustained funding framework, which is essential to unleash all the potential in our universities and to launch them on the path of self-sufficiency through commercialization and other interventions. We are developing a policy to guide these endeavors and ensure that Kenyan universities take their place in as the, at the vanguard of education, training, research, and development, and also innovation. Good people, let me also say that I was in your neighborhood yesterday, and as we discussed the development and launch the beginning, the phase one of the construction of the railway city, which will largely be part of what uh, technical university will be. Um, we were informed that 1,300 additional hostels will be constructed here. I want to ask, I want to ask um, the university management to work with the Ministry of Housing so that we can assist this university to actually construct an additional 5,000 hostels for the students, either in here or in your uh, South Sea facility or the other facilities that you have. And we have a model, uh, Vice Chancellor and your team, that can assist in the delivery of uh, of, of those facilities for the use of the students here. Let me also say that in the development of the railway city, the master plan um, has other facilities, including the facility for foreign affairs, which is just across here. Having been taken round here, and I see the constraints of space, for the development of the other facilities in this university. Uh, I will instruct the ministry concerned to relocate space for the <laughs> Ministry of Foreign Affairs so that the land where we were supposed to do foreign affairs just near you here can be surrendered to the university. <laughs> expansion of the facilities of Technical University because I find great value in ensuring that the expansion for facilities in this university be provided. <laughs> Additionally, as uh, Governor Sakaja said, we are redirecting resources 
from other sectors so that the Kenya Urban Roads um, Authority can complete the bridge here in the shortest time possible to assist students <laughs> cross to the other side of town and to eliminate unnecessary accidents that are going on and affecting the mobility of students around this space. Let me also um, say that uh, I look forward to coming back to this university uh, one of these fine days so that we can take this forward uh, together. Let me also say finally, as part of our big plan on technology, innovation, digital economy, the Technical University of Kenya will play a central role in ensuring that we develop the human capital that will help us drive our country into the future. Let me also say it is my commitment that our human resource is the biggest asset that we have. And the mechanism to sharpen that human resource is in education and training. And the technology space that Technical University uh, is, is present is the biggest ever space that we need, not just for building our capacity, human capital uh, capacity in Kenya, but making sure that we have excess capacity that we can export and be able to drive our economy using our human capital. I am looking forward to working with the universities that we have and our Tibet institutions so that we can increase our revenues from uh, the diaspora. We are currently collecting about, maybe receiving about 400 billion Kenya shillings. I expect that in the next three to five years, we should be receiving a trillion uh, um, uh, shillings from the diaspora from resources that will come from our human capital that we have trained in Kenya working globally. I am also clear that it is universities like Technical University and all our other institutions of higher learning that will support the human capital that we need to drive our industrialization, our agro-processing plan, our value addition agenda so that we can be able to grow our economy, expand our, uh, our, our revenue base and ensure that Kenya becomes sustainable and we stop borrowing money from others and begin to lend money where others require. <laughs> With those many remarks, good people, I am, it is my pleasant duty now to officially inaugurate the Technical University of Kenya's new projects as follows, tuition building block uh, in block S, which we just launched here, the construction of the Senate Tower, which uh, will be block uh, T, which I uh, uh, did the groundbreaking, and the construction of block uh, I also in the vicinity of this university. Thank you very much. May the good Lord bless you, and may God bless Kenya. Asante Nisana.